Welcome to part two of our series on setting up solo mining pools within your home network. And in the prior video, in part one, we set up all the dependencies to basically get our dedicated system up and running so that it would be relatively easy to start running uh, mining pool software as well as the actual nodes all within Docker. Today we're going to be setting up our first mining pool and this is going to be just a baseline setup. We're not actually going to be mining to it or anything. That'll be in the next video. Uh, but today we want to get the baseline uh, mining pool set up. So we're going to be using NOMP today, which runs on Node.js. And this will be a super simple setup for the most part. But this is going to be the baseline for running a lot of our uh, solo pools. Uh, and this is going to be for the more popular algorithms. So right off the bat, one thing you need to know is what algorithms are supported so that you can determine if this is the mining pool that you want to set up or if you want to go with a different alternative. So just real quick, I want to touch base on all the algorithms that are going to be supported. So we got SHA-256. We've got script, the original script, uh, script OG, script, script Jane, script dash N. SHA-1, C11, which is the FPGA algorithm, uh, X11, which is the DASH algorithm, X13, X15, uh, Tribus, NIST5, Quark, Kejik, Blake, Neoscript, uh, which would be like Feathercoin and some of those coins, Skeen, Grotzel, Fug, Shavite3, FD1, and the qubit algorithm. So these are all of the algos that we will be able to run with this specific pool installation. Uh, if you're looking to set up a pool for a different algorithm that isn't in this list, then this tutorial is probably not for you. Uh, there will be other tutorials in the future that cover uh, other platforms that cover a lot more algorithms. But for us, we're going to be setting this up, and in the next few videos in the series, we'll actually be setting up Grotzel and Tribus and some of these other coins. Uh, if you want to set up a solo Bitcoin pool, this is a great way to start. Uh, it does support Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, all the SHA-256 coins. Same thing if you want to do a solo pool for Litecoin or Digibyte or anything like that. This is a great option as well. So to do the setup... Uh, this is going to be kind of the one exception that there's a little bit of a setup outside of just running a Docker container. So there is some preliminary steps we need to do. So I am remoted into the system with the pool user account. So if you remember in the last video, we created a pool user account. And we're going to create a couple folders. So the first folder we're going to create is just going to be uh, .rmt nomp You can name this whatever you want. This is where all your pool config files are going to be stored. So we're going to create that folder. And all these commands will be in the description of the video if you need them. And then we're going to create a coins folder within that config folder. And then we're also going to create a pool configs. And then what we're going to do is we are going to do a git clone on my repository. And we're going to throw this into a temp folder. And then we're going to copy some files out of that into the folders we just created. So we're going to basically copy this config example file into a config.json. That's going to contain our overall config for the pool. And then we're going to also copy uh, any of the sample configs into the pool configs folder. And this one is super important. We're going to put all of the coins into the coins folder. And then we can remove the temp folder once that's done. Now, before I start the Docker container up, I do want to talk about what is kind of in this folder. So if we do a ls on rmt nom slash config, what you'll see is there's a config.json file. We'll cover that in a minute. There's pool underscore configs. This is where your mining pools will be set up. So each coin that you want to mine will essentially be a mining pool. Uh, so just keep that in mind and it'll have its own config file here. Coins. So if we move into the coins folder, 
uh, whoops, .rmt slash config slash coins. What you're gonna see, that there's a JSON file in here for every coin that you want to run a pool for. So in the future, if there is a new coin that gets created for an existing algorithm, like we, we're always seeing new SHA-256 coins get spun up or new X11 coins, all you need to do is find a similar config file and pretty much replicate it with the new coin name. So if we take a look at something like Gertzel coin, just pull that one up real quick. You can see we have a name, a symbol, and an algorithm. We basically make a copy of it, change the ticker, change the coin name, make sure the algorithm's right, and then we basically can set up a pool for that coin. Super easy. So that is a file, or that is a folder that you may use if your coin's not already in here. And then if we go back up to the config folder and we go into the pool configs, this is where you're going to store any of your mining pool configs. And in future videos, when we talk about setting up the exact pools, this is where we're going to be creating files. Uh, there is a Litecoin example one in here. You can see enabled is false. So this won't actually run the pool. But this is where you would define the coin, the address of the mining pool wallet, any reward recipients, and the payment processing information so this will actually connect to the node to issue the payments out of this wallet address to whatever miners are mining on it. Uh, this is where you can configure uh, the difficulty, uh, the adjustable difficulty if you want that, or you can set static. And then the daemons, this is the actual connection to the node for communicating with the blockchain as far as submitting blocks, getting the work that needs to be done, things like that. So those will be files that we will be working with in the future. However, uh, if we move back up to just the config folder, I mentioned we have this config.json. I'm going to go ahead and open this. And this is going to contain the baseline configuration for your overall mining pool. Uh, this is mainly things like the local database engine that it's going to use and what port the web server is running on. So if you already have run something running on port 80, as an example, you could come down to the website section and you could change this to 8080 or you can change this to 81, whatever you want that pool to run on. Uh, I will just leave it as 80 for now. But in, in the event you have a conflict, you can set that. You should also come down here and in this uh, this section here, the stratum host, you should change this to the IP address of your system. So for me, this is going to be 192.168.1.78. This is optional, but it will make your life easier uh, because in the UI, when it gives you the stratum URL that you're going to want to copy and paste into your miner, this is going to be the prefix for it uh, so that you're getting the right IP address. A lot of this other stuff you can keep as default, you shouldn't have to touch, uh, but there I can quickly go over a few of these. Um, the log colors, this is just doing a molly colored output, nothing too crazy with that. Um, CLI port, it's going to kind of run its own uh, API that is accessible, so this is the port that that's going to run on. So these are your default pool config settings. So you've got your block refresh interval, re, your rebroadcast job timeout, connection timeout. These are all kind of when it's communicating out to the miners about uh, the work that needs to be performed. And then uh, most of these you can just kind of leave as default. Uh, if you want to disable banning, since you're just running this on your home network, it really, you don't need banning on because you don't have outside miners connecting to it. Or you can leave it on, but you do risk uh, if you get a whole bunch of invalid shares, things like that, your miners could get banned. You can see here's where those are set. So invalid, if you get more than 50% invalid shares, that's going to ban it for this amount of time. Uh, and then uh, Redis, this is the local database. Now when we run the Docker container, it's already going to have Redis in it, so I would not change this unless you want this to point to a central server you're already running. So we're going to go ahead and close this file. There's really nothing that we need to put in there. Now, I like to run a program uh, that is 
more of it's used for managing logs uh, but first we're going to spin up the pool and then I'm going to talk about another container that I like to run alongside so as I mentioned we already have docker installed so if we do sudo docker ps-a we can say we're not running any containers this is the command we're going to run. So it's going to be sudo docker run dash g to run detached. We're just going to name it rmt nop. You can name this whatever you want. The important part here is you want the network to be host. Um, this is very important. Uh, I covered the reasonings for this in part one of the series. So if you missed that, definitely go back, watch that. And you'll kind of understand the importance of this as far as network latency between docker and the host. Uh, we're going to set the restart always, so if it ever crashes, it's going to restart. We're setting a max log size for this, and we're doing a volume mapping here. So we created this config folder, this uh, so dot rmt dash nomp slash config. We need to map that to the Docker image, and what that's going to do is it's going to tell that Docker image to pull the configs off of our system. So if we ever remove the image and reload it, all that data will be persisted through. And then the image that we're working with is just going to be the retro mic uh, slash nom. So you're going to hit enter. This is going to start downloading the image. This might take a couple minutes, but this will download and this should auto start. And then once you see this little GUID, this is basically telling you the container has launched. So now if we hop on over to a web browser and we go to the IP address of the system, we're running it on port 80. So now we can see it is up and running. There are no coins or pools actually set up on it yet, but we can see that we can navigate everything. There's just no coins listed or anything, uh, but we've got the graph stats, the table stats. Again, once we're setting up pools, we're going to see more info pop up here. Uh, mainly with like the coins that we are running pools for. And the other thing I mentioned is there is a, another Docker container called Dozzle that we're going to run. So to run that one, we're going to go ahead and put in a, another command. And that's going to be this. So this is going to be sudo, doc, sudo docker run. Uh, we're going to give it a name of Dozzle, we're going to run it detached, and we're going to map the volume to var run docker.sock. So if you've ran port portainer in the past, this is very similar to that. Uh, and then we're going to pick a port to run this one. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to run on port 8080. Uh, now this one will have port mapping on it, uh, but that is fine for our use case here. Uh, again, you don't have to do port mapping here. You could do a network host and be fine, but this one's just doing logs, so we don't really care about the latency here. We're gonna go ahead and run this. This is gonna spin up that container. Now, if we go back, and you're not gonna see the full power of this, really, until we're running a bunch of mining pools, but if we go to colon 8080, and you can see now is we've got our running containers on the host. They're gonna show over here, and if we click RMT nomp, we're going to be able to see all the running logs from the mining pool server. So if there's any errors or anything, we're going to be able to see those here. We can validate that it's getting accepted shares, all of that over here. And obviously we can even see the logs for Dozzle itself. Anytime we run a container on this system, it's going to automatically pop up the logs for all those running containers here. And then the nice thing is we can also see the memory being consumed and the load as well. So, uh, really, really cool container. I may cover this uh, container in a dedicated future video just because I really do like uh, all the functionality it provides, especially through the web UI. So at this point, we have everything set up. So in the next video, we're going to be setting up Innova, which is a FPGA mineable coin. And uh, we'll basically be leveraging our NOMP instance and It'll look kind of like this, where we actually have Innova running. We'll be able to connect our FPGA to it on our local network. And we will should be able to see it hitting blocks. As you can see, I'm running this on another instance. 
This has been running for a few days and we've already hit almost 2,000 blocks. So we should be able to, in the next video, see it hitting some blocks uh, pretty quick. So stay tuned for the next part, which will be part three in the series covering how to actually get a coin up and running on Nump.